Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertainMedia.com, and in this video we're covering Flying Pages. Flying Pages is a bit of an interesting optimization plugin that when used correctly can greatly improve the performance of your website. But we need to first explain how Flying Pages works, so we're going to go over to the settings menu and I'm going to talk about how this plugin works. So, Flying Pages works essentially by preloading a page that the user is about to click on. And it does this by when you hover over in a link, like in your menu or your add to cart button, it will begin preloading and prefetching that URL. So the thought process is the browser will already begin downloading all the necessary resources for that page to be rendered and open, and thus it's going to be much faster for them to open up that page. This is very useful if you have a well-designed website where you have clear uh, called actions that are leading to a specific page and you have a very good site structure because you can kind of assume then that the user is going to go and follow one specific path of pages. So we're going to go ahead and mess with this set with this plugin and I'm going to show you kind of how it works. So you install it, you get this nice little settings panel and you can do a couple things. Number one, delay to start preloading. As I mentioned here, this will delay the start preloading links in viewport after the browser becomes idle. Hovering links doesn't have any delay. So zero seconds, that's what they recommend. Um, that's fine. Max request per second, they put it to three requests. This is the maximum amount of requests that the browser is gonna be able to request from the server at any given moment. What I recommend doing is choosing preload only on mouse hover. And here's my reasoning. If you have a very complicated page layout, let's say you have a store and you sell a ton of products. If you begin preloading every single product in the viewport, and those of you who have run a store and uh, whatever this fake store is, you're gonna know what I mean when you have a lot of products. So for instance, this is just default WooCommerce. It has, what is this, 12 products on the first page? So the server would then have to go ahead and process all 12 products whether or not the user is actually going to click on them. The downside of that is, is while it could in theory make it faster for the user, it's going to then hammer your server with pages that they're never going to visit. So I don't really recommend preloading all the links in viewport. It only makes sense to preload links that they're going to hover on because those are the ones where they already have an innate interest into clicking. And as I mentioned here, uh, you can choose to add a hover delay, which is basically just after X amount of seconds, the browser will begin to download it. So basically, um, if the user had their mouse on the image or URL for 50 milliseconds, then it will begin preloading. You could set this to a more reasonable time, but 50 milliseconds, maybe 100 milliseconds is totally acceptable. The general thought process is, is that you don't want them to be preloading links that they may accidentally run into when they're scrolling. And you know what I mean, if you're on a page like this and you're just scrolling all the way down and you're scrolling all the way down and you're scrolling all the way down and you get to the end and you've accidentally hovered over four images and your browser's now sending out four requests, it's not necessary. So a little bit of a delay is actually a good thing. And then as in here, it, you can ignore specific keywords. It will ignore the add to cart and the cart page because when it fetches those pages, it can cause issues with them rendering items when they add them to cart. So I would also add your checkout page here, which sounds counterintuitive, but you want to avoid any potential issues on the WooCommerce front. But for an average news site, you shouldn't have to really mess around with any of these. Um, if you're trying to exclude images, I would also add Web, WebP for those of you who are using WebP Express, which I have covered on the channel before, just so that way it's not preloading and trying to get image files that it doesn't need. And that's pretty much what all you're going to need. Uh, you could just disable it for logged in admin users. I do recommend doing that because if you're using a page caching plugin, you have it disabled for administrators anyways. So you definitely don't need to be preloading everything for admin users. And as it mentions here, there is a compatibility check just to make sure that there is nothing amiss in your configuration that you, you have to have HTTPS and there's a cache control check and there's an FAQ and an optimize more page. So right now, we're gonna go ahead and say, you can only set it to one request per second and preload only on mouse hover. And the delay is here because we only want it on, a, on mouse hover. 
So we're gonna go ahead and save and I'm going to log out now just to show you how this works. So you're gonna go to the home page, and first of all, we're just gonna to check to see that flying scripts is loaded. Okay, we're not flying scripts, flying pages. This flying pages.min.js is here and it is loaded. So now all you have to do is effectively, first of all, we're gonna go ahead and do one thing. We're gonna go ahead and reload it. So that way we could see, okay, everything is now 36 requests have been sent out and nothing else is there. We're gonna begin hovering on this. As you could see at the bottom of my request URL, it has now begun preloading the necessary resources for this HTML file. So now if I click it, it's gonna feel a lot snappier because it already had this resource ready. We go back to the home page, and we're just gonna try this one, hello world. As it, you could see, it began fetching the hello world document and it prefetched it already in the waterfall. And it took five, um, 500 milliseconds. And you could do the same thing for here, and it will go ahead and fetch them again. So it's already prefetched the HTML, and it can just load it right up. And that's basically the general gist of how this works. If you had a cache plugin as well, it can get those resources if they change. But effectively, since I'm not using a caching solution, all the assets are loading on all the pages anyways. So they're already gonna be readily available in the browser's cache. Even though I have disable cache enabled, we'll go ahead and swap it back to the homepage, just show you one more time. So uh, we're gonna go here, hello world. All right, and just prefetch the hello world link. We're gonna click it and it opened up hello world in two milliseconds because it was prefetched from the cache. Come back over to the home page. We're gonna click on this one. As you can see, 509 milliseconds, you click it, you can scroll back up to the document and it fetched it in three seconds, because uh, three milliseconds because it was prefetched from cache. This can greatly reduce the load time of your pages if it's implemented correctly. You also have to be aware though of very complex site layouts and especially for mobile users, this is why I don't recommend prefetching all the URLs in viewport. Because while it could help if somebody does end up clicking on them, most sites tend to have a fairly complicated layout with many different links to many different internal pages. If you wrote a thousand word article, for instance, you may be linking to five different posts on your website if you have good internal link structure. So by only doing it on hover for very specific links, you're able to, number one, reduce the amount of bytes that the browser has to download, which is good for mobile users, and it will also make it to where they don't have to worry about their main thread being blocked as much, but it also saves them on data, which is also very important. Uh, I've seen sites that have tried to implement this. There was actually a site where they implemented this via just some code they just slapped in their functions PHP that was kind of a half fix. And what it did is it preloaded every URL in their menu, which sounds like a good idea. Hey, they're gonna probably click on something in your main menu, so you want them to click on it. Unfortunately, this website had well over 100 links in their main menu, and they also applied it for when they were logged in. So every time an admin user was trying to access the website, it was effectively giving them a denial of service attack. It was serving them 100 uncached requests whenever they tried to open up any page. So I'm not a big fan of pre, uh, prefetching all URLs in viewport because it's just not a safe thing to do, but prefetching them on hover can be a very good thing to do. Just make sure when you do this, um, you test to make sure you don't have any weird issues uh, because this is prefetching the URL from cache. If there were any changes between the prefetch time and when they actually went to the URL, it could cause issues. Also, while we did prefetch this, that's only gonna be prefetched for a few seconds after it was requested. So the prefetch cache is not long-term storage, which is a good thing for you because it's gonna save you from running into common issues. But you have to just be well aware of the potential pitfalls of using the prefetch cache with flying pages so that way you don't run into any weird anomalies. If you have any questions about this plugin, please feel free to ask. It's honestly a great plugin. And effectively right now, I can't think of any free, even some of the premium caching plugins don't have this functionality baked in. I think Swift Performance Pro has it built in, but for those of you who are using WordPress Rocket, this plugin does work with it out of the box, even with the uh, JS combined feature enabled. 
and it shouldn't have any issues. Otherwise, make sure to like the video, subscribe, and as always, I will see you in the next one.